Welcome to season two of the Therapist of Millions podcast, where we get under the skin and into the brains of leading therapists and coaches from around the globe to find out what makes them tick and how they are helping those on the front lines of mental health around the world. I went to the bathroom and I, I saw myself in the mirror and it was like a, a big eye, which was me watching back from the mirror towards me. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I closed my eyes. And for me, it just started. And there I was like, if it started for starting for my brother also, and he's gonna die because I'm not there to protect him. Because it, it plays your, your biggest fears, like they are real, like it is happening. Hello and welcome to the Therapist 2 Millions podcast, where we get into the brains and under the skin of the leading therapists, expert therapists around the globe. And today, all the way from Romania, we have Loredana Duran, who is a skilled psychologist and a consciousness coach based in Romania. Whereabouts in Romania, Loredana? Whereabouts are you? I mean, Rubniku Vulcha is the name of my hometown. There we go. I'm glad you said it because I couldn't pronounce that better. <laughs> and, <laughs> Loredana is committed to helping individuals overcome emotional pain and achieve their personal growth goals. Now, with almost 10 years of experience exploring inner discovery through coaching, therapy, silent retreats, psychedelics, neurofeedback, training and shamanic rituals, we're going to have a great conversation. Loredana has developed a keen, and <laughs> keen understanding of the tools needed to guide people through difficult moments, including depression, anxiety, problematic relationships, separation, sexual emotional abuse, fear, shame, guilt and loneliness. Loredana graduated with a degree in psychology from the University of West London in the UK, which is why her English is so good, and is an accredited consciousness coach from Maastricht. Her mission is to help people recognise and reveal their inner power and intuition to access their life's gifts. Loredana, welcome to the show. Amazing. I'm so happy to be here. So great to have you on. Now, uh, we've had a little break with the podcast. We've had a, a three week break because we've kind of revamped some of the questions. So you are our first guest on our version two, our season two of the Therapist to Millions podcast. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so good to have such an amazing expert therapist on as a guest. So what type of therapies do you actually practice? What are your modalities? So I, I do practice a combination between coaching, energy healing, I do a lot of meditations during my uh, sessions. Um, theta healing, because I observe that sometimes just talking to people, it can uh, we can be a lot in the mind space, and then um, going beyond and uh, going in the alpha or theta state, it really helps a lot to shift their uh, state to a new state of consciousness. And do you and, use hypnosis in, in your practice as well to do that? Yes. A combination of like hypnosis and meditation to get them into that alpha and theta state? Yes. So uh, at the beginning of the session, uh, we do have uh, like a coaching conversation mm -hmm. uh, where I find out uh, what they aim for, for, what their problems are, whatever is going on in their life uh, at that time. Maybe... Uh, what are their physical pains associated with uh, the states they are going through? And then we just go in a state of hypnosis or in a theta state and we start the healing process. Fantastic. And how do you bring the energy healing into that as well? Because I'm fascinated to hear more about that. It's intuitive. Um, I have to be honest because it's it's a, a combination uh, that comes from all the methods um, I I was trained in, but also I discovered myself. Um, and during the conversation with the person, I kind of see where he's going, and I see what the needs are. Um, and for example, sometimes are, are are people that they have a very strong mindset. And that is good to have a strong mindset, but sometimes can go against you. So just slowing down, observing the body, going beyond the mind, observing the mind, then you can start the healing process. Wonderful. What's your background? What's the story? How did you get to learn all this stuff? I mean... <laughs> oh, I, you know, it's, um, I think, all therapists maybe majority, we are motivated by the, our own uh, questions and our own pains Absolutely. Uh, and struggles. 
And uh, same here. Uh, I was totally unaware about this uh, entire uh, world of psychology. Um, not of psychology, but more of um, healing through our uh, inner power. Because I was in the mind state till I was uh, 31 years old. And uh, I didn't I didn't realize I don't have a real purpose. <laughs> I didn't realize uh, I was just following others. Um, I had a career in uh, credit risk management. I was working in a big corporation. I was traveling a lot. Um, just that mentality that if I make money, all is fine. Uh, and uh, it, it wasn't. <laughs> and I did more, uh, and then uh, I started to explore what what is more out there. And first, my first experience was uh, going to a silent retreat, um, and I was just listening my own mind. And I saw that I was like the weather. I was getting upset, but nobody. I was not talking with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> So then I understood it. It was me and it was my mind. And I started seeing my mind uh, and what my mind was telling me. Uh, so uh, basically that was the stage where I went beyond my mind. <laughs> and then there it started. Uh, after that were so many other experiences and lots of manifestations. Um, I would say things that... Um, before, before that experience, before I, I realized that it's an entire world out there, I thought that impossible, uh, just happened. I will give you one example. One example is like, um, I grew up like in a, a normal family in a small town in Romania. We didn't have uh, money for me to study abroad, like in London. And uh, when I was like 27, 28, I was like, you know, in this lifetime, I never, I will never have the chance to study somewhere else, like in US or London or uh, these big centers. And uh, and it happened after. It happened. Or oh, things that I thought were impossible, I just manifested, uh, and I had lots of amazing experiences that opened up uh, my consciousness to new realms. I, I would say. Hmm. What was the, what was your first um, in terms of learning about how to do the manifestation? Who was your first kind of guide or teacher in that? I would say I didn't have a teacher. Uh, <laughs> I was teaching myself. Uh, like one, uh, oh, it, it comes. I think, and now I'm I have the understanding of, of what I was doing without mm. knowing. Mm. Uh, so, for example, I was working like 12 hours a day. It took me one hour to go to work and one hour to come back. I didn't have a car. I'm just going by bus back and forward. And then one day I was so upset. I was like, why I don't have a car? Why? Like, <laughs> what is the reason I don't have a car to go to work and come back? Why I'm staying, uh, paying rent in this small apartment? And I work 12 hours a day and I still don't have what I think I should have. So it, it first it, it came the one thing, yeah, the, my desire that opened up the space for creation. So then I was, okay, um, how can I, I get all of that? Uh, like I, if I want the car, I want to have the apartment, but I had no money, zero money. If I was to condition everything to the money, that was the blockage, right? What was in between me and what I wanted to have. But money were, were not a problem. And it proved to me on and on. Uh, and I'm still, um, I'm still doing that process. So uh, like two or three months after, the competition of this company I was working for contacted me offered me i think are you are you is this stuck oh okay no. okay offer offered me like a, a double salary three times the commission i was earning and the car <laughs> <for my> <laughs> <laughs> so 
So after another six months, I bought my uh, apartment exactly as I desired on a uh, street, not a big building, just four floors and exactly as I, I uh, intended. Mm. So things are happening. So did, were you kind of like learning that, that if you have if you have or embed those like consistent thoughts and 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 I mean, we talk about it from thinking from the future, not of the future. You just sort of pulling from that future reality and bringing it into your present reality. How how do you describe it now to your clients? I, it's like um, I think if you really want something and you want it with all your heart, um, and you leave on the side everything that uh, is like, oh, I'm not worthy of that. And you just believe that everything is possible for you and there is no condition that you have to meet in order to receive something. Mm. Um, because um, when, when we try to manifest whatever we want, then uh, the, the blockages come in the form of, oh, I'm not good enough for that. Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't study that. Uh, my English is not good enough. Um That'll I, never happen, yeah. yeah. Yeah, or it's not my first language, or um, I didn't grow up in that country. I or I'm not. I don't have. I'm not from a wealthy family. <laughs> That's another one. I'm uh, from a, a country that is not so well developed. Uh, all these things that come come up, you know, in the process, uh, thinking not only about yourself as a. Uh, what you identify yourself with as a person, but also like the social background. Um, and uh, then even uh, ancestral maybe, because you you kind of, I, I found in myself and in my awareness, think, thinking through layers of uh, conditioning that were coming from the communism. Mm. Um, era yeah. so uh, obviously that I was seven years when uh, they uh, when uh, was the revolution in Romania mm -hmm. uh, but I still remember I still remember queuing for bread and they were, I had a card and they were taking two things and they would give me two breads and a half for uh, mm. for my family so they, they have a, like a specific uh, portion for each of us so yeah, all of those uh, things that happen historically and who you are and who you uh, think, uh, who you identify yourself with might stay in the way for you of getting what you want. And, and I guess that's uh, where once, you get that, where the energy healing then comes in. Because if you see someone's got one of those limiting beliefs and they've got a blockage, but they've got the energy stuck somewhere. Is that what yeah. you do? You identify the energy. What do you do? Do you do you kind of like get it, get them to to kind of work with it or move it or release it? How do you do that? Yes, we work with first. First, we we go in a, a deep relaxation state. Mm -hmm. um, they become uh, aware through guided meditation about their body, uh, and they start identifying uh, tension or pain in the body, and then we look at the uh, color. The texture. Uh, we talk with that pain. We see why is there, what it wants, and and the client finds the answers uh, for herself himself. Like they they know what the message is. They talk with the pain. They understand their own pain. And then we do um, um, process of release, uh, relieving that pain and uh, healing process, and just see what were the limiting beliefs attached to that pain mm. yeah so uh, for example um, i'll give you an example one of my clients uh, she identified like she had like um, a a metal uh, bar uh, parallel to her spine um, she had something like very um, softly on her uh, heart and and then she had a hand turning her uh, head like this, mm. and she identified like all was pain in the head, pain in the back while she was meditating, 
And she identified that as being her mother's energy, that she wanted to control her decisions. She wanted to control who she was. She wanted to control what she feels for mm. uh, her lover and so on. And, so and just so you just went in and just worked with that that energy, uh, and then what do you you clear it or you release it? How do you, how do you do that? Yes. So first we identify it. We see what it is, what it is, why is there, and mm. then uh, if they feel the same, they feel it's the moment we we release it. Like uh, it's a, a, a simple process. Like you imagine how it dissolves in divine energy, and then it leaves you, and then you kind of. Um, you have to implement the person with the new beliefs. Like you are, uh, you are safe to be on your own. You are safe to take your own decisions. You know how to take decisions on your own. Um, you deserve to be free. So you implement the new belief system. Like it. And, and that explains why in your kind of like long list of all of the different things you treat, it's just it's like, well, it's pretty much everything really, isn't it? So. There's no problem that someone can come to you and you can go, oh, no, that's impossible. It's like, no, we'll deal with that. And so we'll, we'll work out where that's come from. Yes. Yeah. I love that. What's the biggest issue or the biggest challenge you're facing in your practice right now? It's um, it's still myself. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Always there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's myself. Yeah. Um... For example, I think I can get organized myself better and I can do so much more work than I do now. Um, and my next level will be to work with groups of people. Right now, I, I work one-on-one and I have amazing time. I like uh, I have clients without the... I do all the sessions in nature. We go and uh, wow. walk on the hill. Uh, yes, with with the, with my dog, I have a very beautiful white fluffy dog, and uh, we do the healing process there. It's beautiful, um, and I, I I think my biggest challenge now is to expand my practice and to find a balance between like working with individuals and doing something which is which has much more power, healing power, for more people. Can you do group work with the healing? Because I know uh, we, we, I've got a friend who, who does energy healing. She does it with the groups, but she's quite clear. It's like if there's like lots of different people with different issues, I'm not going to be able to do like a group clearing of your bespoke mm -hmm. problems. I can do a generic one. I can, you know, sort of kind of ground everyone, but not do it bespoke. How do you do that on a, in a group? Uh, I don't do it with groups yet. Uh, I did few retreats in the past. Uh, that uh, they had a certain uh, team, uh, but I, I don't do group energy healing at the moment. Tricky and difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do, on, on that basis, how do you look after your own mental health? I'm assuming you do your meditations and your you know your 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 self hypnosis. Yes, I do. I do meditate. Uh, this morning I went to a yoga class, um, two hours yoga class, which was amazing. Wow. It was so. <laughs> I mean, yes, uh, I walk a lot in nature. I love going in the mountains. I like swimming um, and, uh, not, uh, in uh, natural water. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, sun baths are, are really important. And also, I think it's, it's good to protect your energy from disruptive uh, people and become aware of where your energy goes like much more awareness and presence uh, to remain balanced and do you have your own coach your own mentor do you have someone to to check in with as well yes I do i do have uh, i work with a healer and she she is one of the first persons that i uh, work with uh, when i had this burnout uh, 10 years ago, uh, she helped me a lot and I still work with her. So what's been your your most successful marketing technique to, to grow your practice over the last 10 years? Referrals. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not such a good, uh, but, uh, I'm not good with marketing, I have to say. I, I did um, lots of reels lately and uh, I think my Facebook page grew a lot from that. Um, 
but I don't have other marketing uh, like strategies. I just do I do post on Facebook, sometimes on Instagram and LinkedIn less. Um, and most of my clients come from referrals. Okay, that's good. Um, so what are your plans for expansion in the future? Groups, working with groups. Uh, I love uh, live uh, workshops, retreats. I find it um, very transformative um, psychedelic retreats. Mm. Tell us more about those. I'm, I'm fascinated because we, my partner and I were going to go to, uh, to uh, Peru to do the Mar uh, yeah. Machu Picchu. And one of the reasons I really wanted to go was because I wanted to do the guided ayahuasca. And uh, then obviously COVID hit, so we couldn't do it. And then we couldn't go back the next year. And we couldn't go back the next year because it was completely shut off in Peru. So I'd love to do it. Tell me, tell me about the psychedelics. <laughs> I will tell you about it. Uh, and I did uh, psychedelics. I did ayahuasca in Peru during the pandemic. Um, oh. It was amazing. Yeah, I even traveled during during the, the pandemic there. It, it, I have lots of interesting stories, but that's for another time. It's um, it's a very deep healing process. It's it, You go like in a trance. I probably you saw our many uh, videos now about that, but uh, uh, you, take, you take the drink in a ceremonial space. It's not recommended to take it yourself at home or uh, without having a guidance because the music and the environment are very, very important uh, for the experience. And then um, after you, you, you go in the ceremonial space, it is recommended sometimes to put some intentions for why you go there. And it might come up an answer or not, but it will give you exactly what you need. Um, and uh, just to give you an example, I went to, I went with my brother for, to, for our first ceremony. Uh, and uh, it was more like for him, but it was also for me. And he was very scared because initially he agreed that he wants to go. And then he said, if I die, if I die, what's going to happen? Imagine you will never going to heal from this. How, what is going to happen to you? And we went to the ceremony. I has don't put this on my back. It's also first time for me. I don't want to carry this thing, you know. Um, and I was like, okay, we, we are going to do it. And you're not going to die, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, I just felt for the first time lots of things in my body, like um, uh, some uh, parts of my body were becoming very like tickling or something happening. I've been laughing a lot at the very beginning. Then the ceremony finished. It kind of felt like it's all over. We went back into the uh, accommodation place and uh, I, go, I went to the bathroom and I, I saw myself in the mirror and it was like a, a big eye, which was me watching back from the mirror towards me. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I closed my eyes. And for me, it just started. And um, I, it just started and all those emotions came and they took me back to the ceremonial space. And there I was like, if he started for starting for my brother also, and he's going to die because I'm not there to protect him. Because it, it plays your, your biggest fears, like they are real, like it is happening. And I became so scared and I was uh, like fear made me so cold. Like I was shaving, uh, like really, really terrible it was. And then it clicked. It, it was like an uh, experience watching myself. And I was like, this is what you are doing all the time. You always fear for him. And I, was, I kept hearing my mom since I was a little child, like, uh, take care of him, please. Please take care of him. Please take care of him. And this worry was just eating me inside all the time. Like to, to be careful, take care of him. You know, and he's a big man now. Like <laughs> I don't have to take care of him. But the emotional baggage that I was carrying, mm. uh, just this worry towards him. 
and uh, then it was a deep emotional uh, process of uh, releasing that and uh, uh, let him go, like a separation of the cell, like something like it was so profound. And I cried so much to let go and understand and give him the trust that he can handle everything and that he knows his soul journey and, and he, he can be on his own independent and I don't have to worry about anything. And that was like 10% of all that happened. <laughs> that was just 10% <laughs> of it. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wowzers. I, I, I'm definitely going to have to do that. <laughs> I'm so going to have yeah. to do that. Um, now, have you written a book? Are you writing a book? Would you like to write a book? And if so, what's the title? Um, yes, I would like to write a book. And I consider this is a long time. And it's going to be about uh, uh, sex, sexuality and intimacy. Um, I, I don't have the title yet. It might be Sex and Consciousness. Hmm. Um, but it, it's going to be something between all the uh, sexual archetypes, uh, what we know right now about sexuality, what is happening in the world <laughs> right now, um, and then go to sacred sexuality and um, maybe some other approach, the, the approach from this point of view. Oh, wow, sounds amazing. You've got to get writing on that one. Uh, <laughs> on the <laughs> subject of books, what is your favorite therapy book and why? My favorite therapy book? I... You know what? I am listening now. Everything that I do now, it feels for me that is the most amazing thing. Uh, so now I'm uh, listening the teachings of Abraham Hicks, mm. and are amazing. I just love it. I uh, this uh, understanding the fact that that we are vibration and we just all the time we send vibration around us and the universe responds to that that's all you have to know it's it like you have to just be aware of what in what kind of vibration you are right now like mm. uh am i in fear am i in anger and i am in i'm hiding what, what's going on with me or i'm happy uh, enthusiastic uh, i'm in love uh, or i'm peaceful love it Okay, tell us a fact that blows our mind or tell us a joke that's one of a kind and you can win three months free membership to the Therapist to Millions website. Oh. <laughs> a fact is that uh, you can set yourself uh, yourself free. Hmm. You can set yourself free. Like a new state of consciousness is available right here and right now if you say yes to it now. I love that. It's nothing that has to happen somewhere else for you to pass to a new state. It's just you have to pass to your new state of consciousness for something to happen outside you. Mm. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. I love it. And, uh, you know, I absolutely love the fact that you've got all of your, all of my favorite parts of, you know, therapy and therapeutic practice and holistic practice and, and everything else kind of combined into your into your therapy practice. And I think it's wonderful what you're doing out there on the front lines. Finally, how can people get hold of you? I take it you do Zoom calls as well for anyone who's overseas that you, you know, so how can people get hold of you? Yes, I do Zoom calls uh, on my Facebook, uh, my Instagram, Loredana Juran. Uh, and my website is uh, psychologistsforwellbeing.com. Uh, so on any of these, they can contact me, DM me. So I'm I'm available. Fantastic. We'll put all the links in the show notes uh, for anyone who would like to get into contact with you. And uh, finally, yeah, just to say thank you. Thank you for being out there and for you know putting yourself out there for not continuing in your corporate role and uh, and and turning to something that is. It's helpful. Obviously, the, what we're trying to do with the Therapist to Millions is to raise the consciousness of the entire human race because with the, the rising tide, all boats rise. Thank you very much. It was a, a pleasure Absolutely. to speak to you. And uh, it's it's so beautiful to, to talk about all these things and to help people. 
Thank the you most so much. important is to help those that need our help. If you would like to take part as a guest on the Therapist of Millions podcast, simply email me, damien at therapistofmillions.com. That's Damien with two A's. As all of the guests on the show will get three months free access to our Therapist of Millions membership worth $300. So if you would like to know how to write a best-selling book, secure a TEDx talk, create membership sites with content you don't even have to create, build client acquisition funnels, effective lead magnets, or your very own podcast, and way more besides, why not head over to therapistamillions.com and join our community of like-minded professionals. And if you'd like an additional $20 off your membership, simply type in the coupon code PODCASTLISTENER at the checkout.